Hi, my name is Cecilia Sun and I'm a lecturer in musicology here at the Conservatorium of Music at the University of Western Australia. And I'm Sarah McCliver, I'm a lecturer in voice here at the Conservatorium of Music at the University of Western Australia. And we're here today to talk about and perform for you at some leader. So leader or lead in its singular form simply means song in German. So when we refer to leader, we're talking about a genre of music that started at the end of the 18th century and flourished in the 19th century um, and beyond. Uh, it is the quintessential German, German musical genre of the 19th century. It came about as a result of a number of factors, including the rise of German poetry, the increasing availability of the piano, especially as a domestic instrument, and the growing search for a German identity at a time when the country that we now call Germany was simply a collection of separate states. So this resulted in a fascination with everything related to folk, both actual folk music and folk poetry, and folk music and folk poetry that people were writing and composing at around this time. This meant that some of the earliest examples of the leader or the lead by composers such as C.P.E. Bach were very simple and folk-like. Simple melodies, the right hand of the piano, often just doing what the voice is doing, relatively simple vocal parts, relatively simple piano parts, and often designed to be sung and played by the same person. From this very humble beginning, the genre flourished to include some of the most intimate and some of the most profound music we have in the Western art music tradition. It is a genre that places the singer, the poet, the pianist in close collaboration. For our performances uh, today, we'll be using uh, this instrument that you see here, which is a modern replica of an early, a very early 19th century Viennese piano. So the kind of instrument that Mozart would have known, Beethoven would have known, Haydn would have known, um, and Schubert would have known. As you can see, it's much smaller than its modern day counterpart. Um, this is five and a half octaves, so it's smaller this way, uh, it's smaller this way. Uh, the keys are, are smaller um, in terms of its length. The hammers are smaller and made of leather rather than felt. The dampers are smaller and again made of leather rather than felt. There are no pedals, but there are knee levers um, operated um, underneath the piano. And all of this contributes to an instrument that is much quieter, much more intimate, full of character, um, and quite a big difference between the very the thinner top of the instrument, the much more lyrical center of the instrument, and really quite a robust um, uh, bass, which you can hear particularly in the last song that we will be playing for you. Lieder at the time would not have been performed in concert halls. They were really both musical and social activities, usually done in drawing rooms amongst friends. So the distance that the camera will bring you uh, close to us today would be closer to what they would have actually done back in Schubert's day rather than if we were to perform it in Callaway, where we have the distance of the rows of chairs and then the stage and then the separate seating area. We will be doing three songs for you today. Uh, the first by Mozart, and then two by the composer who wrote over 600 uh, of these leader in his relatively short career, and really the man who defined this genre, Franz Schubert. I'm Chloe is a lead by Mozart with poetry by Johann George Jacobi. Jacobi wrote 13 line, 13, sorry, four line stanzas with an ABAB -A -B rhyming scheme. However, interestingly, Mozart chose to use only the first four stanzas, which describe the ecstasy of love and passion. It goes downhill after that, so I think that's why he chose to set music only to the first four stanzas. It has a modified strophic form, although it's a little bit more like a rondo, so A, B, A, C, A, but with a coda. 
It has a simple, almost folk-like melody that is somewhat independent of the piano accompaniment. Mozart cleverly uses compositional devices to support the poetry, such as staccato to depict heartbeats, melismas with chromaticism to create a trembling effect of longing, rests for a sense of breathlessness, and then longer rests to represent fatigue or ecstasy. Die Nachtigall by Schubert is a short song set to the poetry of Matthias Claudius. The text is simply about a young girl asking the nightingale not to awaken her love, who sleeps on her breast. The language used here is closer to classicism than romanticism in that it's clear, transparent and simply charming. Yet Schubert manages to compose with such beauty and depth that we get a clear sense of the emotion of the young, innocent girl.
Gretchen am Spinnrad is one of Schubert's most recognisable and loved lead. And to think he was only 17 when he composed it. With text by the famous poet Goethe from Faust, we hear of the yearning that our protagonist has for her lover. She has been awakened to new feelings and sensations, only to then experience the depths of despair at the loss of her lover. The dramatic and musical intensity build as she recalls his noble form, his lips, his eyes, his speech, and ultimately the sensation of his kiss, only to be plunged into despair and hopelessness as she realises she may never know true peace in her heart again. The piano accompaniment represents the whirring of the spinning wheel in the right hand and the staccato clacking of the bobbin or the foot pedal in the left hand. Schubert cleverly uses harmonic, harmonic agitation and melodic rage to reflect Gretchen's turmoil as the wheel relentlessly turns. Oh, mm -hmm. 